<laughs> you record, yeah. Uh, yeah, we can start. Let me get the, uh, the prayer. Um, don't think I'm here, don't think you. Yeah. Think big, okay. Like a. Um, Okay, can we start? Yes. <coughs> Good. <laughs> um, uh, good to see you guys again. Mm, and um, mm, good to see that we have survived this pandemic till now. 
I was worried about Luan. <clears throat> <laughs> Do you have to translate or? or? No, don't have to. That's good. Um, <clears throat> Uh, one of the main reason why um, I have been in, insisting that um, <clears throat> we also um, try to incorporate um, our youngsters um, into these um, Dharma events, you know. Mm -hmm. Obviously, it's very clear why mm, mm, I have been insisting. Earlier, <coughs> sorry, <coughs> in earlier times, lay householders, they didn't have so much responsibilities of Dharma because we were in our countries full of monasteries and nunneries and these monks and nuns, they um, made sure that study contemplation and practice of Dharma continue. Now it's really not exactly like that anymore. Um, Um, <clears throat> time, human emotion, materialism, um, political changes, it's really um, attacking this pristine lineage of wisdom from all sides, you know. And um, it's really, it's really time for um, everyone to get involved. And and so I'm very, very happy that you guys showed up. It's quite important. Mm. And what I'm trying what I'm trying to do here, what we are trying to do here, me and Luan and Lian, <clears throat> is um, try and encourage you to mm, mm, to know more about your heritage, you know, where you come from, who are you? You're not just some random nameless individual in a, in, in a group. You're important, each one of you, you know? And I would really like you to believe that you can benefit Dharma. You know, I really want you to to, to start trusting your mind, start trusting the blessing of the Buddhas. <clears throat> have some courage, you know. I'm sure you are very courageous to have more courage. Um, actually, Dharma is the most easiest thing in this world. Everything else is very difficult, <laughs> you know. You have to go, you have to do something, you have to move, you have to talk to people. Any other mundane sort of business or endeavor, whatever, it's so difficult. You have to put so much effort. Dharma is so easy. You just, you don't even have to move from your seat. You know? <laughs> All happening here you know, in your mind. And that is how we protected the Dharma. Uh, then, of course, why should we protect something just because it's our tradition? You know, it doesn't make sense. Um, every nation, every people, uh, they have their traditions, you know. So why is it so different? So we have to know what is Dharma. What does it entail? What does it, what is, what does it mean to practice Dharma, to become a practitioner? Why should we? 
Um, so hopefully today I will try to <laughs> talk about this. Um, I have some questions from you guys. Um, I think uh, Peter sent them to Luan. Or, anyway, I have them here. So uh, I will try to cover them all today. Um, you know, <clears throat> whatever questions you have, best is if you want to debate with me. That's really good. If you say, hey, you, I think you, you know, you're, you're wrong. And then I ask why, and then you say, because it's, you know, that's really good. <laughs> uh, because all, like, like I said before, you know, uh, I guess some of you may not have been there last time I was in Denmark. All the other tradition, of course they have studies and all that, but if they have a temple, and people come like, you know, once a week and go, their spirituality is okay, it will remain. But ours, if people don't study, if people don't debate and ask questions and meditate, we are finished. <laughs> Empty temple will not help us. We are not like that. It's a, because uh, it's, a, it's the whole foundation of the spiritual tradition is different, you know. Um, and as evident, hmm, uh, Buddhism is right now the fastest dying, one of the fastest dying uh, religion, world religion, you know, obviously. <clears throat> um, so please engage. Think about think think about it. You know, while you're while you're walking, whenever you have time. You know. Um, <clears throat> First, to bring our mind to a calm state, so that we are ready to um, talk about um, Buddha Dharma, and especially this morning, Manjushri. <clears throat> Sorry. <clears throat> um, I request you to meditate with me just for a few, few seconds. <laughs> Please sit straight and backbone should be straight, keep your shoulders straight, the weight of your head on your neck, little bit, you know, face little bit looking down with your eyes <coughs> at the level of your nose. You know. And Until I say, okay, don't move, just don't move. <clears throat> Please start.
Excellent, thank you. Okay. <coughs> Actually, I'm sure Lien and Luan can teach meditation very well. You guys should sometimes, you know, once in a month we gather and I mean, online or however, I don't know how Corona is in your country. <laughs> <clears throat> Um, then we have to, uh, since um, motivation is the most important um, in Buddha Dharma, we have to cultivate motivation. Um, mm. And you can have all kinds of motivation, you know, <laughs> you can have motivation because you are very stressed. Oh, I'm very stressed. I want to be, you know little bit calm. I want to be a little bit compassionate and kind, kinder to others, nicer to my friends, family. <clears throat> That's all right. Come with that type of motivation to Dharma. Then when you listen to Dharma, you, you have that motivation. But know that this is not enough. But if this is what you wish, then this is what you wish and you listen to the Dharma to become more kind, more gentle, more calm and relaxed person. Or the motivation can be to be free from all negative karma. You know, <clears throat> if negative karma causes all the suffering that fall on us, And then for a moment, imagine how, how it would be to have no negative karma, to have no cause of suffering, you know? So the motivation can be like this, that, oh, I listen to the teaching, I, you know, so that I can contemplate and meditate so that all my negative karma can be purified. That's good, very good. <clears throat> but that's not enough. Still, there's more. I just want to give you the <laughs> give you the array of motivation. You choose which one you like. Mm. Then, those of you who wants to be free from samsara have that type of motivation. Mm. Those of you then may also have the idea. Oh, I also want to free my father, my mother, my brother, sister, and all the sentient beings from all suffering, not just myself. I'm sure most of you think that. That's good, that's noble. And then that should be your motivation. No matter what you do, whether you're drinking a cup of tea, you know, you hope, oh, may this benefit somebody somehow. You know, whether you're walking, sitting, talking, that is your motivation then. Um, or the best kind of motivation is so that you can protect the Dharma, so that this lineage of wisdom will continue, you know. I don't want to scare you, but these are the types of motivation. And any one of these is okay. <clears throat> what I wanted to talk to you today is something that um, is historically probably one of the most well-known and famous um, prayer uh, supplication in the history of Buddhism, this one. Hmm. The origin of this prayer is um, <clears throat> this prayer is a prayer of Manjushri. And um, oh, Luan, do they have the prayer? I think one or two persons are not there with you. <laughs> Mm 
À, Hồng, Hồng vô trong uh, group của Corona Meditation Center Rồi download cái nghi quỷ văn thù xuống Did you say Corona Patient Center? <cười> Corona Meditation Center <cười> All right. This is the prayer of Manjushri. Um, now, to understand that, hmm, Obviously, we have to know who Manjushri is. Um, Manjushri is one of the most charismatic, mysterious, very, very strange sort of uh, student, you know, of, of the Buddha. Among all of his students, he is the weirdest one. Always different, always doing things differently. Um, always challenging social norms. Mm, if, you, if you look into <laughs> Um, sort of, <clears throat> you know, the sutras and how Manjushri was, he was always, always very different. Hence, whenever Manjushri will teach something, it would always be different. So ordinarily, for an ordinary person like me, when I look, Manjushri appeared as a student of the Buddha. <clears throat> Extraordinarily, um, Shakyamuni Buddha says, oh, so Manjushri, this, this Bodhisattva, he is the teacher of all the, all the Buddhas of this aeon. So we have maybe 1,000 Buddhas. This, this will supposed to come in this time, right? So Manjushri is the teacher of all of them. Also, he says, mm, uh, sort of, Manjushri is the first teacher that I got who, who gave me the, who, gave, who, who taught me how to practice, how to practice Dharma, you know, and same goes with all the rest. This changes our perception. Now Manjushri is no longer this enigmatic student of Buddha, rather teachers of all the Buddhas. Hence, Manjushri is known as wisdom of all the Buddhas, because where does the wisdom come from? Come from knowledge. Wisdom come from blessing. And someone has to teach you. You cannot just be sitting on a rock somewhere and suddenly you have a wisdom. It doesn't work like that. You know? So um, since Manjushri was the one who appeared in front of all the Buddhas, when there were ordinary people like you and me and give the teaching, you know, encourage uh, all, all of them to practice and to become Buddha and look at what he did. Look at, look at what Shakyamuni does. All the qualities of Shakyamuni now becomes a part of Manjushri's qualities because Manjushri was the teacher, you know. Mm. And it is said that Manjushri is also the Bodhisattva who is going to push all the Bodhisattvas to become enlightened. What does it mean? It means, um, you, you remember the story of the Buddha when Buddha was, you know, <clears throat> in his twenties, and he goes out of his, um, what is it, palace to look around his country. Then he sees 
old, old age, sickness, death, and a very calm monk. All these shocked him, you know. But uh, he may have heard the word death before, but he has never seen it, you know, when he was Prince, Prince Data. He's never seen death, never thought it would be possible. Nobody talked about it in front of him, you know, old age too. He's never really seen old age that your whole back sort of bends and you cannot see, you cannot walk. He's never experienced such a thing. Sickness, maybe somebody got a cold or coughed once or twice in front of him, but nobody was so sick that uh, sort of a, a strong, healthy man or a woman becomes like a skeleton in three, four weeks. He's never seen that. You know? So that shocked him. That shocked him. Um, when, he when the Prince Siddhartha wanted to go out, the king sent hundreds of his soldiers, make sure everybody who is sick and old is locked away. So how did how did Shaksidharta then see you know <laughs> old and sick? Then the Mahayana Sutra says that's Manjushri. It's because of the emanation of Manjushri, Manjushri to push the Bodhisattva, you know, to, to leave his palace and, and, and meditate and become Buddha. He emanates like this. Sutras also teach that even the father of the Buddha, Shuddhodana, is actually. Uh, Manjushri. Um, so, in this way, Manjushri is extremely important. It's so important that many sutras say if you make offering to hundreds of thousands of Buddhas and just make one small offering to Manjushri, this will be more meritorious. This is greater karma because he, this, I don't know if Majushri is a he or a she, you know. So this Bodhisattva is the source of all these Buddhas, you know. So obviously, if you like the result, you respect the result naturally, then you respect and like the source. Now, Manjushri changes in our mind. Before he was like this goofy student, you know, who always did some mischief here and there. But, but now it changes in our head. Now Manjushri becomes very old, like very ancient, you know. That's good. But outer appearance was, you know, Manjushri in front of Buddha was a very old monk, I think. You know, he appeared as a very old monk and then Buddha uh, sort of told him to appear as a young boy, <laughs> not to appear as an old monk. And from then on, Manjushri appeared as a 16 year old boy, younger than you guys, I think. <laughs> that type of history is there. Now this type of history is not really history because it's not visible to common eyes. It's not visible for ordinary human. Then there have been, uh, then there, there is a history of Manjushri which has been available, visible for ordinary human beings too for thousands of years. In the Sutra, Again, then the Buddha teach, oh, Manjushri, you know, after I die, Buddha himself, after I die, you know, first he gives his Dharma, uh, all the Mahayana teaching to Manjushri, Avalokiteshvara, you know, these Bodhisattvas. So these, you guys will continue the lineage, keep teaching. Um, especially, Buddha says, you know, after I am no longer, Manjushri will teach. Uh, he will remain in uh, Rivotsenga. Is what? What is it called? Wutai Wutai Mountain. 
Go on. Uh, I cannot remember now. It's just one of the mountain in, in China. Five mountains, five peak yeah. mountains. Yeah. yeah. Yes. Go Dyson. Yeah, with the Dyson. Uh, there, this is, you know, Munshiri will remain. Now, strangely, it is in Chinese history, especially in their shamanistic history, that on that mountain, before Buddha came in India, before thousands, thousands of years before that, the shamans would see a young boy again and again in, on that mountain, you know, ordinary people like uh, somebody with, uh, with the sheep, you know, walking around, you sometimes meet a young boy, you know, like sitting on a stone and they run to their boys gone like that again and again. Sometimes hundreds of boys and girls playing, you know, sort of <laughs> but then they go, there's not nobody. They didn't know who, who, who these people are. So they, they call it, uh, they, they, they thought it's a shamanistic God, you know, or whatever, you know. So they, they started worshiping them. Only later, when, when uh, Buddha was born, then Buddha says, ah, in, in, in Wutai mountain is the abode of Manjushri. And there, anyone who has devotion will go there, will see Manjushri in one or other form. Maybe as a monk, maybe as a cat or a mouse, or a, I don't know, but you will always see Mandushiri there. Now that is the historic place. That is an actual place where people can go. And the history of that place is rich with such accounts. And there is that type of aspect of Mandushiri that is very earthly, that's very sort of tangible. Um, so true enough, after Buddha passed away, Mahayana Buddhism slowly, slowly, slowly disappeared from this earth. Because when Buddha was alive, when he was teaching, Mahayana, Mahayana teachings were more, mostly given to great bodhisattvas, you know, and to gods and nagas or whatever not necessarily to ordinary humans. So it, it became so scarce that some there were rumors, oh, there is such a tradition called Mahayana, but not, not many people knew what it was. It was again then started by Manjushri and Maitreya. Manjushri taught people like Nagarjuna, Aryadeva, Shantideva, and Maitreya taught people like Asanga, you know. So we have these two strong traditions of Mahayana coming from India. Wait, let me not bore you. So, How long have I been speaking? Yeah. So, so um, then <clears throat> Manjushri became slowly, slowly, slowly um, like a deity, a deity of wisdom. Whoever would meditate on Manjushri, make offering like flower, you know, to Manjushri. Practice, pray to Manjushri, would have uh, exceptional intelligence. Um, so, all the great masters of India starts practicing Manjushri. Mm, you may not, you may be aware of a place called Nalanda in India. It was, um, it was an amazing place, you know. 10,000 great Buddhist scholars in one place, studying, practicing, debating. And at any given time, there would be 500 great abbots. So it's like 500 professors, <laughs> you know? but not just in words. They were great practitioners, all of them. And this, it is called university. 
these days. I, I don't know if it really was university, but they study everything. They study Buddhism, they study grammar, medicine, astrology, arts, everything. <clears throat> so this place produced so many um, great uh, practitioners, great masters, you know, for hundreds of years. And mm, one day, 500 great masters, they gathered and they discussed that, oh, I pray to Manjushri a lot. That's why, you know, I, I become very learned. You also pray to Manjushri a lot. That's why you become very learned. So it seems all of us depend on Manjushri a lot. You know, we pray to Manjushri. So then we become more compassionate, more intelligent, more kind, more wise. Um, courageous. That's very important to be courageous you know? um, and diligent. All these qualities arise within us when we pray to Manjushri. So Manjushri is extremely important to us. So let's do this. Let's make a prayer to Manjushri. Let's make a, let's write a praise to Manjushri. Now there are 500 great masters. Who is going to write the praise? You know, so what they did is all right. So tonight we go to our, you know, go home. And tonight we will write a praise, each one of us. And tomorrow morning we gather and we will um, decide, we will unanimously decide whose is the best and, and who's, whose prayer we are going to use. <clears throat> um, so, that night, they wrote the prayer. Everybody wrote, write their praises, prayer. And tomorrow morning, when they come back and they look at their prayers, and show me yours, show me yours. Oh, everybody has written the same thing, same word, same lines, same text. Everything was exactly the same. So they understood. Oh, I have not written it. It's written by Manjushri, you understand? 500 people writing the same thing. So immediately this prayer, this praise become venerated as a quintessence of Manjushri's blessing. Can you guys hear my daughter singing outside? Um, no. <laughs> yeah? No. no. <laughs> she doesn't stop. <laughs> <clears throat> so um, from then onwards, it became a tradition of all the sort of all the Buddhist scholars, of course, but all the children's too, to recite it from young age. So that's why even to this day, in all the schools of, for example, Tibet, uh, um, Bhutan, <clears throat> many schools in Nepal, Mongolia, everywhere they recite this prayer. Every morning, the children gather and recite this prayer. So it's extremely important and beneficial, you know, <clears throat> um, depending on Manjushri, I mean, all of my teachers have depended on Man Manjushri a lot. Some of my teachers are supposed to be Manjushri. They are, it's in their name. <laughs> Manjushri is something, something. Uh, I myself received this pray prayer uh, and I re remember two accounts. <clears throat> uh, one was when I was uh, 18, you know, 17, 18. I used to stutter a lot, you know, stuttering. Yeah, you know, really. <laughs> it's, it's strange that you guys don't need translation. Usually I always look at Luan to say something, but anyway, that's good. <laughs> I used to stutter a lot, you know. But in the monastery, it's not good because 
you have to debate three hours every day. Every day you have to debate three hours. So you have to say it quickly. You cannot just sort of wait, wait, wait. You know, cannot bring it out. That's that's not work. Doesn't work. So uh, I went to one of my teacher, who uh, belongs to a family that has been blessed by Manjushri for for more than a thousand years. He recited this prayer, and I told him, "Oh, I, I'm stuttering. It's a big problem uh, to bless me." And he recited this prayer, and he it's it may sound weird for you guys, but he blew into my mouth. <laughs> it's not good for Corona time, but <laughs> that's that's 10, 15 years ago. He blew into my mouth. Then I don't stutter after that. That's one account. Another one is again, I'm around 17, 18. There's another master, very great master, old, old. Uh, he became the teacher of his holiness Dalai Lama. Um, he's very strange. You have to turn the light on during daytime because he's old, so he cannot see, you know. But sometimes in the nighttime, when there's no light, he can see. You know? so, a very, very strange man, you know. So he he told me, so I, I went to see him. His name is uh, Chopke Tichin. I don't know if you know. <clears throat> he has meditated so much that because you, when you meditate, you have to sit straight, right? So all of his buttocks start rotting because he sits too much, you know? <laughs> so, and now it's become all hard and flat, you know? Understand? That, that's a great, great perseverance, diligence. You know. So he, I asked for a, for a teaching. So he gave me this prayer. He recited and he said, oh, when I was young, I recited this prayer. I went to retreat and only recite this prayer from morning to evening, morning every day for one month. And he said, from then on, I cannot forget anything, he said. <laughs> I, cannot, I cannot forget anything. There's another incident with this prayer. Mm -hmm. So it's very, very auspicious, very important. You know? I know some of you, it might sound like a, what is, what is it? Uh, fairy tales, like maybe like Star Wars. You know? <laughs> like, like kind of kind of like Harry Potter type, but <laughs> but we can talk about the philosophy behind it afterwards. No problem. It's not magic. It's not a miracle. Actually, it's just inevitable. When you put water, when you put a seed into the ground, cover it, have sunlight, and put water, it will grow. It's just like that. You cannot stop it. Even if you put the seed into the ground, uh, you know, cover it, put manure, like cow dung or whatever, and put water and pray, please don't grow, please don't grow. It will grow. It doesn't, it, it's not going to work. It's growing to grow, you know. Like that, when you pray to the Bodhisattva of wisdom, with with devotion, understanding of Buddha Dharma, it's your 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 just your mind is going to open, burst open. It's it's natural, it's inevitable. Good. Maybe I tell you more about Manjushri later, but I want to start this prayer now. Hmm. I cannot read Vietnamese script so i i do not know luan you give we give them your translation right lean translates not me <laughs> That's translate translate important text
there is a woman. She's like my student, I guess, I don't know. But she comes to my teaching. She is translating Bodhisattva Charaptara into Turkish language because she's Turkish. She cannot show it to anybody. <laughs> she will be me in big trouble if she show it to anybody. <laughs> but she's translating. Then why won't you guys translate? You can show it to many people. <laughs> so, <laughs> translate. Yeah. When you can. Translators are the eyes of the world. So the prayer starts with Lamata Gombo Jizin Jambayan. Wait, let me let me give you the oral transmission first. Taking help. Lama to Gumbo Jis in Jambayan La Chaza, Lo Kangi Ludu, Dimit in Janitor and Namda, Rabsalve, Jinit, Dimkin Jis in Zijerniti, Dugarle Bangsin, Kanta Zibet, or Marum, Dum Tunga Jizerve, Dozogon La Pujitra, they allowed to do Yan this one, Dutra Chudon, Yamuni, no Lady Chado, the Zijing Marin Musel, Dunun, you go, Jinitunzi, Ratinum, Dunya Dajin Sachutar to Yendeluzo, Jesse to go, Chuda to the Junig and the Talumusel Jambayan La. The Dinji Chatter Brother G. Talotim member of San Neca, that Dinji Shunluk Pop by Lodra Pop and now what's all those? That is the prayer. <coughs> so the first one, Lama do Gumbujin Jambi on the Chatter Lodge. Buddha Dharma, the whole aim of Buddha Dharma. Um, is to transform the mind, change the mind, change our perception. Um, hence, one of the most important thing is to have to have gratitude. You understand? To have gratitude, to be honest, is extremely important. You see, you see some other sort of. Mm, people who just say, even though blatantly they copied from the Buddha, you know, they, they read Buddhist texts and then they start their own thing, but they, there is no acknowledgement of it. No. People even people even cheer them because they say, oh, he or she has no teacher. He just figured it out by himself. Almost impossible. You always depend on someone else. It's just how phenomena work. A tree always depends on the soil and the earth and the, you know, sunlight and water. Nobody just comes out of nowhere, poof, from the middle of nowhere, perfect. You know, you, you owe a lot to a lot of people. Humility is extremely important. So in the beginning, <clears throat> you make homage, you make prostrations to your guru, to the teacher who have taught you. And this can be anybody. Most important teachers of our lives are, of, are our parents. Mother, who gives you language. Um, to a school teacher who, who really wanted to benefit you. <clears throat> and who taught you all these um, valuable things with which now you can live your life, you know, to, to a Dharma teacher, um, like that. So first is prostrations to the Guru and then prostrations to Manjushri. Kangi Ludu Dimitinda Nyadarnanda Rafsalves, Kangi Ludus. The one the one whose mind is completely free from all obscurations, obscurations. Kangi Ludu Dibni Tinder like a 
like a sun that is not blocked by any clouds. What happens when a sun is not blocked by any cloud? You, you see the sun and it can function fully. It can do what the sun does. You know, similarly, when our mind is not blocked, obscured by any obscuration, it, it can do what the mind can do is to be, to, to be enlightened, to be completely awake. Um, all right. Um, Dibni Tinder. So what does it mean? The two obscurations. I try to make it simple. Um, the first obscuration is obscuration to liberation from samsara. What does it mean? Is that when you have them, like anger, you know, aggression, desire, and ignorance, when these three you have, you cannot be free from samsara. Even though you are holding on to the hand of the Buddha, you know, so <laughs> you cannot be free from samsara. Um, what does it mean, free from samsara? It is. It doesn't mean that uh, you you go you go to some other place, you know, sort of like Harry Potter going to Hogwarts. Like you, you, you do not you do not get somewhere, you know. Freeing from samsara is while you are here. The mind is completely clean, completely clear. There is no aggression. No desire, no ignorance. That is freedom, freedom from the first obscuration. Um, and rightfully so. When you're angry, first of all, you feel bad. You feel horrible. You do things, say things that makes you feel embarrassed afterwards. You know? <laughs> and, in a moment, you can destroy a friendship built for a lifetime, you know, like that. So it's not good. It's an obscuration. It blocks your mind. What is the work of the mind is to know, to be aware of anything, everything. You know? But when you're angry, that is completely blocked. Or when you're in, in, in strong desire, or oh, when you're strong desire, completely, even though this person or object is very harmful or whatever, you don't care, you know, you're, you're what is it? You know, you're completely obsessed. You, <laughs> you give up everything. Well, that's not good. Clearly clouding your judgment. Igno ignorance, obviously. <clears throat> All of the suffering of this world happens due to ignorance. We don't know what will happen. We don't know what has happened. We don't know what is happening except what we can see. That's a very ignorant state. Like uh, having a tiny torchlight on your head in an in a ocean of darkness. You know? So when you have these three, your mind is completely blocked with the dark clouds. What happens when you have a dark cloud? The sun cannot function. The sun cannot do what it can do. You know, uh, and the other type of obscuration, so this is the first obscuration. The other type of obscuration is um, this, you know, when you look at your mind, just look at your mind, it is so restless. You find it so restless. It has to, it has to keep thinking about something. It just has to keep thinking. You can get tired, but mind just keep, like if the mind is this hand, it has to keep holding something, something new, 
all the time, you know, <laughs> I don't know, that was weird. Something new all the time, grasping, you know. That is the other obscuration, to, to grasp on something all the time. <clears throat> so Manjushri's mind is free of that. Manjushri's mind is free of that. So we are saying, you, Manjushri, whose mind is, is like a sun without any clouds. Your mind is without any sort of obscuration. And because of that, because your mind is not obscured. So, you know, when, when, when there is this book here, but in between me and my book is this, <laughs> I cannot see the book, <laughs> you know. But when there's no, I can see the book. <laughs> Similarly, Manjushri's mind has no obscuration. So he sees the ultimate, he sees the reality of phenomena directly. He doesn't, you understand? He doesn't have to think. We have to think. He sees directly. We talk more about this afterwards, okay? Reality or whatever. This is main, actually. Because you see phenomena as they truly are, um, to, to symbolize that, as a symbol that you see everything, you, mainly you see the reality of the phenomena, the, the truth of uh, our existence to show that you, you have the, the uh, Dharma scripture on one side, you know, you hold the Dharma scripture. You guys have Manjushri pictures, yeah? So you see that he has a Dharma scripture, yes. <laughs> And you And you Why are you called Manjushri? Manju. Why are you called that? Manju Jampal, Jampal Yang means someone whose, whose voice is very soothing, very soft and gentle and, you know, why, why, why is that? Yes. Then, he says, Kanda Sibbe Tsoran Marim Muntum Dungar Jizervis, you who look at sentient beings, um, who are who are in the prison of samsara. Now again, when he, he's, we read prison of samsara, it doesn't mean that this world is earth is samsara. Earth is not samsara. Earth is also not nirvana. Earth is earth. <laughs> It's not like this samsara and then up there, there are some people floating and not letting us go out. <laughs> not like that, <laughs> not at all. But we are bound in our mind, you know. Samsara is our state of mind. So in this state of mind, he says, all sentient beings, are in this state of mind. And why are we in this state of mind? Because we are confounded, you know, confused with the deep sleep of ignorance. 
darkness of ignorance. You can even, why is sleep called ignorance actually? Sleep is also considered to be a sort of ignorance. You can see that when you sleep. First of all, you lose consciousness for a while in a way. Then you start dreaming. Nothing is there. That's ignorant. And you believe your dream. <laughs> you start running, screaming, ignorant. Even when you wake up for sometimes for a minute or two, you cannot function, you cannot speak properly. <laughs> you know, you have to sort of hold on to, to the wall to walk, you know. <laughs> this happens to me sometimes. Oh, so like a headache and keep the window shade on, you know, like <laughs> just slowly turn the light on. It's ignorance. So you, Manjushri, who look at sentient beings who are in samsara, completely confounded, you know, sort of mm, dumbfounded actually, sort of completely, completely in the darkness of ignorance, count the secret, sort of marit mantam dunal jizirves. And everybody sort of in their own suffering, everyone is in their own world, almost like going to a madhouse, you know, like a crazy house. <laughs> everyone in the same cafeteria, but they're just in their own suffering. Everyone is in their own suffering, you know kind of similar. So to all the sentient beings, you have compassion. As strong as someone, as strong as a mother who has only one child, only one child. Um, doesn't mean the father who has one child is not you know, loving the child so much. But generally, mothers love their children more. You know, there's a lot of sort of physical connection from the start and all that, you know, so obviously. So the example is like a mother who has only one child in this world. And she always think about the child, you know, what is, what is my, my child doing? You know, if she can see the child, you know, is my child um, eating, sleeping, drinking properly? If she cannot see what is what is happening now, where, where is my, you know, like that all the time. Similarly, Manjushri to all sentient beings, his compassion is like that, strong and fast and uncompromising like this. And then to benefit, to awaken mother sentient beings, he speak, he speak with, with 60 different tone, 60, 60 different melodious tone. It's, this is a quality of the speech of the Buddha. No, don't fall asleep. <laughs> this is the quality of the <laughs> Speech of the Buddha. <laughs> we just said we have to. Manjushri wants to <laughs> awaken. <laughs> All right, this is the quality of speech of the Buddha. So it said that when the Buddha speak, it has sixty different tone, mm. meaning his speech has many qualities. Like uh, everyone will hear in their language. Not only that. Everyone will hear what is going to benefit them. No one knows what Buddha actually says. You can only know what you have heard. That's why at the beginning of all the sutras, the bodhisattvas or the monks write, thus have I heard. They don't write, thus did the Buddha spoke because nobody knows what Buddha actually said. But everybody hears differently when Buddha teach. That is one of the qualities of the Buddha. So, and all like that, some are very kind of strange, you know, like uh, if some, when Buddha teach, 
someone who is sitting right in front of the Buddha will hear the same volume of the sound as someone who is sitting sort of at the end of the crowd, you know, like up, <laughs> after 1000 people, they hear the same volume. So to say. <laughs> I don't know. So like that, you know, so, uh, so your, your speech has these type of 60 different qualities. But even though you speak very gently, very compassionately, patiently, sometimes, not sometimes, all the times, your speech actually it has the has the power impact of, for example, when we are sleep, when you are sleeping in a deep slumber, suddenly there is a thunderbolt right outside your window. First of all, your window is going to break. You are going to wake up. <laughs> you are not. There is not going to be any Tom, Dick, and Harry who is still sleeping when there, there has been a thunderbolt sort of outside their house, like, you know, lightning just <laughs> falling outside their window. Nobody's going to be sleeping then, immediately. When, when sentient beings come into contact with the teachings of Manjushri, they have to wake up. They have to wake up at some point. So, Dr. Chedros, you know, your speech, even though gentle, it's loud and strong, like thunder. Do the children, it, uh, uh, it um, awakens sentient beings from slumber, sleep of uh, afflictions. Do the children, nyamonyilo, leji chakdok drills jings. And you free sentient beings from the chains of karma, leji chakdok drills jings. You hold a sword on your hand, not, a, not like a, you know, like a, some, some God that has a sword so that you pray to the God and then God kills the enemy or something. No, no. Manjushi is not going to do that. So <laughs> it's useless to hope for that. <laughs> what Manjushi is doing with the sword is, um, what is it? Those who pray to Manjushi, those who meditate and practice, practice Manjushi, from your mind, slowly, slowly, the sword of Manjushi starts working. And then Manjushri will cut the seedling, the, the, the weed of suffering as it grows. You, Manjushri, who dispel all ignorance. When ignorance is dispelled, uh, all the seed of the suffering will also cease. It's just like a, it's just a level of, you understand? It's just a level of uh, mm, acceptance, level of acceptance. In this world, you know, most of the things human being we do right now will look crazy to people after 100 years. They will think, why would these people do that? But right now, it's not crazy because we think it's not crazy. Everybody accept it. You understand? It's really our human sanity, insanity. Very strange, you know. Uh, hundreds of years ago, it's okay to what is it to, to, to think very strange things like uh, <clears throat> that there is a, 
almost like a glass ceiling on the sky and all the stars like are like carpet on top of it's fine at that time that is the height of intelligence you know <laughs> and nobody questioned that if this whole world you know this let's say there is some sort of disease that spread in this world and everybody thinks they are bird every human being thinks they are bird and if you are not sick you are the crazy one now if you start walking rather than trying to fly you know they call you crazy you know it's all about what is accepted for manjushri it's all the same there is no no real difference between um, a crazy person in an asylum like a mad asylum and a healthy functioning crazy like me and luan no difference it's same just a acceptance you understand level of craziness is a bit <laughs> apart that is the same so mari musal dungun ko chinge chan se rajnam so he manjushri has a sword in his hand that cuts away all the um, grass all the weed of suffering mari musal dungun ji then a dark and such a thrsan you have questions or complaints uh -oh. give me complaints i don't know how to talk to young people you have to tell me i don't think luan does too maybe he's better than me but still no <laughs> complaint yeah, or questions or whatever come forth kaka uh hai -huh. <cười> mọi người có nghe hồng nói không ok hồng thì lần đầu tiên vào đây cho nên cũng không có biết thầy đây như thế nào mà hồng thấy tại chưa có biết thầy đây cho nên hồng có câu hỏi tại vì thầy có đi tu nhưng bây giờ thầy hết đi tu rồi hay sao vậy uh, thầy hết tu đi tu rồi vì thầy để về nhà hay là thầy còn ở chùa hay là gì đó thầy thầy có center riêng à vậy hỏi vậy thầy hết đi tôi thì thầy được có vợ có con nữa dạ yeah. <cười> dạ thì hả à, okay. yeah. thầy thầy có vợ có hai con à vậy tại sao thầy muốn đi ra đời lại vậy Ok, hỏi thầy ha. <cười> tại vì tại vì Hồng mới đọc về uh, Sin Buddhism ở Yap hay nó thì yeah. nó cũng nói là thầy tu bên đó cũng được có thể có vợ đồ mấy thứ đó. Cho nên là khi mà nghe thầy đây hết làm thầy tu đi ra đời lại rồi cho nên mình muốn hỏi tại sao thầy chọn đi ra đời lại đó mà. Yeah. Ok. Um Ramesh là Yeah. I want to ask because she read about the um, Buddhist in Japan because mm -hmm. the uh, monk in Japan they some of the lineage they have wife and kids so <laughs> she asked the reason why you uh, disrupt and have family oh. <laughs> <laughs> hmm. that's very difficult question Um it can be easy if you want it to be easy. Easily I have to say if you are a monk you cannot have wife and children. Mm. Now the difficult part is There was a master he he practiced Avalokiteshvara he followed Avalokiteshvara one yin i think um <clears throat> he lives in india but every afternoon he will go to see avalokiteshvara in potala and I think somewhere in mount kailash <laughs> so 
Every after every afternoon, this master is not available. He closed the door from inside. Nobody is allowed to see him until morning. One day, as he was on his way to Potala to see Avalokiteshvara, obviously he was not sort of walking like we would walk to. That would take months to reach Potala, I guess. He was going miraculously. Nevertheless, on the way, he saw a monk. No, he saw somebody wearing a monk's robe, half monk's robe, and half monk's robe he put around his head. He was farming. And he thought, oh, how horrible, a monk farming. You know? And this man also was drinking, you know. He said, that's horrible, monk drinking. And he has wife and children. So he go to talk to him, says, hey, stop doing that. That's, you bring shame to Dharma. Don't do this. Um, so he's, he, he said, I'm sorry, I will not do it anymore. So, so then he, 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 he asked, you know, so I'm not a, so then now I'm not a monk, right? So if I wife is, no, you're not a monk, you, you know, wow. After that, he really thought I have no wow. And then he, for almost like a month, he didn't see Avalokiteshvara. He prayed and prayed this master, you know, prayed and prayed, what happened? You know, what did I do? I don't see the Bodhisattva anymore. Then the Avalokiteshva appeared and said, that man, you harmed him because until now, he doesn't understand Vinaya. You know? So he thought, oh, if I have, okay, so there is four main vows of monks. You cannot steal, you cannot lie, you cannot kill like that. You cannot have sexual contact with anybody. But this man, this farmer, he thought, okay, so I don't have the vow of not having sexual contact, but I still have the vow of not killing, not like, this is what he thought. And because he thought like that, he was being very careful. He wouldn't kill anybody. He wouldn't lie to anybody. He wouldn't steal. Now he thinks I have no vow. <laughs> you know, like, I have no vow. And this is very difficult, like I said, because strictly to Vinaya teaching, we have to say, well, if you do any of these, you're not a monk. If you steal, if you lie that you have spiritual attainments, even though you don't, or if you kill, if you have sex with somebody, you don't know, you're not a monk or a nun anymore. Um, but then again, there are this side of things where Buddha said, a fully ordained monk in front of me right now accumulate a lot of merit, right? And he says, in future, when the Buddha Dharma is about to end, it's a very degenerate time. If someone will keep just one of the monk vow, he will get more merit than someone who keeps all the vow. Buddha said that, we have it. So then some masters say um, that it is possible. You can do that. But most will say, no, you cannot do that. Now, which answer you want to choose is your choice. <laughs> but, but, you know, that is how it is. It's a difficult, very difficult topic to go through so much debate and then you know, but ordinarily, you cannot do that. Simple like that. Yeah, and what about your, the question relates, relates to your... Hmm? She asked you, she has a question like, um, the reason why you disrupt and have family and children. Me? Oh. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm a disgrace, you know. So I thought, oh, why? 
Why bring shame to the monastery? I should go. And I went. <laughs> <laughs> because I, I, you know, I like things, you know, I like to, to have friends and I like to, to talk and to be with people and, and that's not good. You know? I don't have renunciation, you know. I, I admire samsara, I enjoy it like, uh, I, like I enjoy food. Every day, <laughs> the most important thing for me is food. Morning, I get up, I have to have a delicious breakfast or uh, the whole day is wasted, you know, so. <laughs> that, you know, and then, uh, so that's not good for a monk. And, and after a while, I, I start, I became a teacher in the monastery, you know, and then uh, I see these young monks, they really, they really think you, you know, because you're a bit older and you have like a name, like a Rinpoche, whatever. Some of them really think, oh, this guy is really good, you know, like because so I thought, oh, that's not good. And so, so I told them, you guys stay, okay, and I left. <laughs> Be good, you say, I can't you. Say, All right, bye. And they left. Nothing, nothing, no, no story. Thank you. Any other question? What? It's okay. Luan, you can ask for her. Yeah. Uh, Ling asks, um, what is impermanent, the meaning of impermanent? Because uh, every, everyone is mentioned about impermanent, but the understanding, they use the word, the word. Use the word impermanent, but they don't understand the, word, the meaning of the word impermanent. Impermanent. Um, well, in detail, we should talk about it maybe afternoon. Impermanence is <laughs> impermanence is like a like a like a crack when somebody's lying. Somebody's lying. When you look carefully, you can see that the story is not good, perfect. And there's a hole in the story, you understand? <laughs> you can see. When the mind lies to itself and think everything is surreal, but they change. They don't listen to the mind. They, they change, they, you understand? Nobody remains, nothing remains the same. And that's the, the whole from where you can see, oh, it's not, it's not real. You understand? It's a, it's a. Simply impermanence is change. Why change? Is it because of a God or a, some energy? No, it's just, how things are, just change. Whether you want them to change or not, they change, we change. Each one of us go through countless number of change within a second. Mm. Not just hundred times change or thousand times change. You, you know, understand? Mm. Okay, simply, impermanence show us that there is no true identity of anything. All right. 
when I look at myself, in my mind, in my belief, I don't believe I'm impermanent. Why? Because maybe somebody, somebody hit me when I was three years old. I remember that now and I get angry. Oh, you hit me. Actually, so that's my experience. That's my feelings and memories all together jumbled up. But actually, I'm a 30, 35 years old man. <laughs> I forgot, <laughs> 35 years old man. That was a three year old boy. That is not really me. I am not really that, but I'm also not someone else than that. And that is also not someone else than me. You understand? So what happened? Change happened. A three-year-old boy changed, 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 changed. And this came. And if I'm lucky, I live until maybe 80, you know. It's an old man. <laughs> That old man is not me. I am not that old man. But that old man is also not someone else than me. What happened? Change happened. Now, I ask you one question then. Which one is the real Dotul Go? Which one is the real me? Sort of. Oh, I don't know. <laughs> Is the three-year-old the real me? Is the seven-year-old? Is the 35-year-old? Is the 60, 70, 80-year-old sort of dotulku is the real me? You can't say that. You cannot point to anyone. Say, and oh, that's true, that's real. You cannot also say, all of this is you. That's stupid. That's being emotional. That's not being objective because how can a three-year-old be the same thing an 80-year-old is? It's not logical. Maybe I made it more difficult than it should be now. I don't know, but if you ask what is impermanence, that is impermanence. That it is the, it is the hole in samsara. In, in illusion, but yeah. anyway. <clears throat> Where are we now? Can I just begin? Huh? We start in stanza one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. 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 Yeah, so Manjushri has the sword of wisdom that cut the, the, the suffering from, you know, its root. Then a darjan, such a tarsi, and then Luzo, just said to be cool, shoot out, shoot down, to nigan, the talum of the Then a darjan. Now, Mm, we are talking about the real Manjushri. He says, actually, you, Manjushri, you are mm, clean from the beginning. We're not talking about a God here, that, oh, the God just appeared. Because if you ask anybody who believes in a God, you know, ask. So this God is a pure being. You say, yes, of course. When did this God start? You say, you cannot ask that question, you know, because God is beyond time. God, you cannot understand God. You know, they say things like that. It sounds similar to that when we say to Manjushri, you are pure from the beginning. But actually, we are talking about the real Manjushri that is the Buddha nature. Within all of us, even an insect has that. Even Donald Trump 
has Buddha nature. <laughs> In his heart of heart, Donald Trump is exactly the same as Shakyamuni Buddha. You know, in sort of the deep, deep, maybe very, very, very deep in his case. You know, sort of <laughs> so, 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 you understand? But somewhere there, somewhere underneath all that sort of ruckus is Buddha nature. <laughs> but it's there. That's important for us. That's Manjushri. That's the real Manjushri. We will talk about what Buddha nature is one day, you know, or ask any teacher, any teacher. Hmm. It's an important factor. This will change your life. The, the notion of Buddha nature, the understanding of Buddha nature changes life. You no longer look at things like you used to before. It's an important part of dharma. Um, so you who is pristine from the start, meaning we're talking about the Buddha nature of Manjushri or our Buddha nature, which is the Manjushri, the real Manjushri. Because remember, we are Buddhist. Buddhists don't follow. Uh, Buddhists, you know, if you pray to Manjushri, like somebody prayed to a uh, uh, a tree god or a mountain god or a wind god. That's stupid. And we destroy the teaching of Buddha. Buddha says, your enlightenment depends on you. You go to a temple with a flower. Oh, today is my exam. Please help me. You know, that, <laughs> that is really not good. That's really not good. Yeah. yeah. Um, so then what does it mean? We pray to, you can pray to Manjushri as an elder Bodhisattva. Oh, you are an older Bodhisattva. I'm a younger Bodhisattva. Please help me. That's good. You can pray to Manjushri as a, you know, as a Buddha, as a Bodhisattva. Uh, or uh, mm, <clears throat> like how a poor person respects a rich person hoping to get some money. That's okay. That is totally fine. But real prayer to Manjushri is to know that all oh, this, this young boy with the sword is actually the nature of my mind. You know? It's just shining like this outside. There's nothing there. It's really, there's no boy outside walking around with the sword. You know? But it's, you know, you understand, it's really the nature of my mind depicted as that because I'm too stupid to understand the nature of my mind. So now it, Buddha show it to me in form of this boy. Like, same goes with all the deities like Avalokiteshvara or Tara, you know, there is no green girl outside. You know? That is weird even, but all right. Um, <clears throat> Dene Dachings, you are pure from the start. Sachu Tarsun. Now, also there is another understanding to this term because in many sutras it is said that actually Manjushri became Buddha a long, long time ago, even before Shakyamuni even starts becoming, <laughs> practicing Dharma, Manjushri already become Buddha. You should read sutras, boys and girls. There are so many sutras available in English, all free um, to read. Uh, for example, we are translating a sutra right now. I'm being very lazy, so it's taking too long, but it's about an eight-year-old girl who talked to Buddha, you know. She asked Buddha, and she's very special, you know. So um, all the monks, you know, great sort of arhat and bodhisattva go to this girl and ask her question and she defeat them all, you know. And then finally Manjushri comes. She's even better than Manjushri, you know. So Manjushri is confused. Oh, who are you? See? And then Buddha says, oh, she was your, your teacher, you know, when you, 
when you, you, you were my first teacher, she was your first teacher, you know, like that. Sutras are very entertaining like this. You should read them. They're there just waiting to be read. Anyway, so here we're talking about Manjushri. So then, even though you have become, even though from beginningless of time, since you are Buddha nature, you are completely pure. Or even though you have become enlightened for a very long time, such you thirsts and such you thirsts. When, when someone like me, an ordinary person, wants to become Buddha, I have to go through ten different sort of level phase. You know, so that's what it means that. Manjushri, you have passed through all these 10 levels and such you thought and you enter in resource. So you have all the qualities of the Buddha actually. You appear like a bodhisattva, you know. That's your play. That's sort of like your sort of youthful game, but actually you are Buddha. Such a just a two-way course. But in appearance, you look like uh, the you look like the sort of the best student of the Shakyamuni, of the Buddha, but actually you yourself are Buddha. Chuta Chuta Chuni Gintis. And on your body, you have all the signs of the Buddha. Buddha is supposed to have 112 uh, physical signs, like, hmm, uh, the length, the width, the length of his body and the width of his body is same. You know. <laughs> yes. When Buddha is sitting like this, his earlobes touches his shoulder. <laughs> I don't know why. <laughs> but Buddha's hand, fingers have web like a duck. Uh, what else? Buddha have protuberance on top of his head. Each strand of his hair, you know, completely black and round. Buddha has a white hair here. When, when he pull it, it can go till the end of the world. And when he let go, it reaches here. This, for us, is strange, right? But uh, each one of these, you know, meant so much in a different time for a different intelligence. It wasn't really physical qualities. So much, but at, you know, uh, I think it has much more meaning to that. But in India, in those days, these were the their idea of a perfect being. So then Buddha appeared like that. The tongue of the Buddha can cover his whole face you know, like that. This is what they say. I don't know. Um, So Manjushri, you have all these qualities, he says, you know, like Buddha has 40 teeth, you know, and each of the teeth is same size, you know, so we have different sizes, this is thicker, this is fatter, this is thinner, but longer, each teeth are all same, you know, like that. Uh, Buddha has chakra on his hair, palms and his feet. Um, like I said, the reason why Buddha has all these qualities, physical qualities that makes him very unique and special is that each one of these is to teach sentient beings. For example, Buddha says, I have chakra here because I have never stolen anything in my in many, many, many lives, you know, and always gave to others. Like I have never killed anybody for a long time like this. I have chakra on my feet, you know, because I went everywhere. I crossed through a fire. 
thorns, you know, stone and ice to get dharma for many lifetimes. I have to show as a sign, symbol, I have chakram, you know. Uh, so each signs are actually have meanings like that. But anyway, but for us, it kind of may be amusing for our mind now because <laughs> we are not used to these. So, but Manjushri, you have these qualities, is this chuda chuda chuni gates, meaning actually you are, in essence, you are a Buddha, but you appear like a Buddhist. Chuda chuni chuni gende thalu musil jambi You who have 112 qualities, you know, you are the dispeller of my darkness. Remember, Manjushri is your Buddha nature. Real Manjushri is not outside. It's like a arising from your mind, you know. So you are the dispeller of my darkness. Talum is the jambelian like this. So to you, Manjushri, uh, I, I prostrate, I make prostration. So you should read it like this, you know, make, uh, make prostrations like this. And Mm, history of Manjushri is rich, especially mm, Manjushri appearing in front of people and guiding them, teaching them. If we would put them all together, what happened in India, for example, <laughs> uh, or what happened in Tibet and China and all these countries, it will be maybe 10, 20 volumes of books. My dream is to actually put them all together one day, maybe in my next life, I don't know. Um, so many, so many. Mm. I don't even know when to start, which one to tell you, you know. Manjushri appearing in front of practitioners not just great masters, sometimes ordinary people, some grandma, some old man somewhere. In India, there was an old 90 year old man who didn't know anything. And then he finds between some rocks, he finds a paper, piece of paper. And due to his merit, he's, he understand what is written. It's a prayer, prayer of Manjushri, not this one, just a little bit different. And he recited, and within one day, he became extremely learned. Of course, he had karma of previous life, you know, but in this life was extremely stupid, but you know, so many uh, instances of blessings of Manjushri like that. Um, like I said, at the end of the day, uh, everything depends on whether you are used to it or not. Yeah. Mm. And it will function. Whether you have trust, uh, and trust comes when you are used to something. Um, Try this once, and if you are still interested, then we will talk more about Manjushri. That's really endless. Uh, but um, be like this, like a, like a son or a daughter asking to the father for your inheritance, like a, like a child going to the father, Manjushri here. Give me what belongs to me, like this, please, you know. Cry a little bit if you can, you understand? We cry for so many stupid things. This is good. Even though there is no Manjushri, doesn't matter. If you cry, oh, please give me compassion. I don't have compassion to, you know, what to do. Please give me strength to, to control my anger, to get rid of my anger. 
even though there is no Manjushri, you're just alone in your room, this will work. <laughs> you understand? <laughs> it's important. Um, yeah, so if you have questions, please, then you raise, or I think it's quite long. You guys, yeah, are very diligent. For the youngster, they, they, they like to be more activity like they have in the order rather than uh, reciting the sutra. That's good. Is that okay Just uh, if we just um, have in the order without reciting sutra? Mm -hmm. Having what? Just happen the orders like when we do activities rather than reciting sutra. Is that okay? Mm. It depends on our motivation. Stay careful. No. Doing activities is really good. Do that. Sometimes boys and girls get together, cook cook food. You know your 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 food, whatever. Go out, give it to people, to homeless people, like that. Simple. Or I don't know what activity you mean. My teacher. He's very, very unique. We believe he's Manjushri, you know. Um, uh, I, I heard him telling one of my friend, one of my friend, he's the head of one monastery, you know. So he said, because he said, oh, it's so difficult. The youngsters are not interested in, in Dharma, what to do. He said, oh, have Saturday parties. <laughs> what? Yeah, 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 P have parties. But before party, you teach them for 50, 15 to 20 minutes about impermanence and so on. And then you say, now enjoy and start the music and let them dance. <laughs> and I thought, oh, that is, you know. But if it works, it works, you know. Um, but here, your question was very innocent and it's really good that you want to do something. Now, I don't know what you want to do, but if you want to do something like gather together, clean the environment, sort of save the environment or uh, help poor and needy, or I don't know, you know, um, it's all really good ideas. Do them. No, you don't have to sit and recite and stuff all the time, um, you know, but also know that at some point you have to know the Dharma. Be, 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 uh, because uh, Buddha says, you know, you, you have to free your mind, our mind, you know, so mind usually uh, mind can be freed from three ways. It's mind can be freed by mind itself. Mind can be freed through 
speaking things and mind can be free through doing things. Now you want to do things, that's really good. You can also speak about it, read the sutras and so on. But the most important is then the meditation. You can go around doing things, carry Manjushri on your shoulder, you know, and then go, 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 go see, look at the city, everything. Understand? And then you see, <laughs> see, uh, 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 I don't know what you guys like. I don't know, like uh, if you see a beautiful boy or a girl, you, oh, I offer, oh, what a beautiful man or a woman. I offer it to Manjushri. You understand? You under me, your mind. <laughs> No need to read, then read a little bit, of course, but no need to sit in the temple all the time like this. Then go do things. Give when you give to the poor, you think, is this drunk, old, stinking man? Can this man be Manjushri? Maybe, I don't know. <laughs> Yet you give with respect. <laughs> để mà hiểu về Phật pháp, tụng kinh là để hiểu Phật pháp chứ không phải là tụng kinh để con nhớ thuộc rồi con tụng hoài, rồi xong rồi phải có thực hành là thiền định. Đó cũng không khi con cần phải đọc kinh, tụng kinh mỗi ngày. Và tụng kinh đó là để mình nhớ lại kinh, thiền định, mình suy tư về nó. Chứ không bắt buộc con phải tụng kinh. Tụng kinh là để nhớ tưởng tới Ngài Văn Thù. Bây giờ nếu mà mỗi ngày con điểm nhớ tưởng tới Ngài Văn Thù thì không nhất thiết. Tụng kinh nữa. Vậy vậy, con nhớ tới Ngài Văn Thù cũng có thể nhớ được. Con không cần tụng kinh khác. Pháp tụng khác. Pháp tụng khác. Pháp tụng khác. Pháp tụng khác. Nhưng mà nếu mà nếu mà nếu mà hoàn hảo nhất á là mình phải tụng kinh nè, mình phải đi làm việc thiện nè, rồi mình phải hành thiền định nè. Nhưng mà con không nghĩ là tụng kinh không nghĩ tụng kinh là nó vô nghĩa. Ah, she say reciting sutra doesn't make sense. Doesn't make sense. Doesn't make sense. It's useless. Hmm. You do it distractedly. Ah, uh, tại con làm nó bị uh, phân tâm á. Nếu mà con không có phân tâm nữa, con cứ định thì con sẽ thấy nó khác. That's really good. Ask her what she wants to do. Then what activities? Yeah. Rather than uh, um, sit down and recite in sutra, she will do something to help her mother, for instance. Her mother? Yeah. That's really right. good. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, instead of like sitting down, reciting sutra, she go to work, earn money, and that money she going to help in the order. Mm -hmm. That's really good. There are many ways of practicing dharma. During the time of Buddha, there was a very special man who wanted to become a monk. And Buddha tells him, no, I want you to do business. I want you to earn a lot of money. And I want you to be generous, generous, give to poor people mm, and make offering to the Sangha. He become one of the most important students of Buddha, Anatta Pindika. She doesn't need translation, does she? Huh? Does she need translation? No. No. Don't can get loud. Hiểu. Ah, tại trong lời Đức Phật có một vị trưởng lão 
ngài muốn trở thành tu sĩ nhưng mà đức phật nói là không ngài muốn đức đức phật muốn ngài là một người 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 thương nhân tại vì khi ngài người thương nhân á thì ngài có thể uh, giúp đỡ được nhiều người hơn thì ngài đó là ngài giúp cô được yeah she's also thinking like that not everybody should be doing the same thing không phải ai cũng phải làm một cái giống nhau some should become kings and uh, ministers and mayors and prime ministers có thể người thành vua thành quan để đứng để có thể giúp người khác nhưng mà vấn đề của con là con không có học Phật pháp đâu con làm con làm mới thôi con phải thêm học thêm pháp nữa thì cái làm đó nó mới phù hợp to hold the dharma all of this is important to become a banker to work in a carpenter you know all very important you should do it Because our tradition, uh, um, normally we we put too much effort and time to recite the sutra. Mm. So that's why uh, Chuk was uh, doesn't like that way. There are eighty-four thousand ways to get enlightenment. Some get enlightenment by making offering. Some get enlightenment by cooking. <laughs> There have been Indian masters who get enlightened by serving, uh, by become servants of prostitutes. Understand? Người hầu của You know. Some dharma would be finished without people like King Ashoka, you know, or the Tibetan Dharma kings, the Chinese Dharma kings, and all the great ministers, all those lay people you know, who support the dharma. So really, I'm not saying this to patronize you. I'm not saying this to, to give you an easier way out. This is a difficult way what you chose. To support the practitioners, you yourself going out, but then you have to know when you earn the money, you know, while you're earning, always have this motivation. I want to protect the dharma. I want to protect the practitioners, so I have to earn money. Then, every day you go to do your job, every step you take is dharma practice. <laughs> khi mà kiếm mình kiếm tiền á mình muốn kiếm tiền á mình nghĩ tới là à, mình muốn kiếm tiền để mà mình bảo vệ Phật pháp mình để mà mình hỗ trì à, những người à, tu tập thì nếu mà như vậy á, có cái tâm đó thì mỗi bước chân con đi đều là Phật pháp hết. This is really important, you know. So I'm really glad that some people think like that. We need both. Yeah. Mình cần hết hai thứ luôn, nhưng mà thì rất là vui khi mà có những người có suy nghĩ giống như Tâm. Good. Um, now I think it's, it's uh, time to, to we end this session and meet later. All right. It dedicate? Nhớ đông đơn này, vì nhớ chúng ta bước vào khi nào, khi nào nghiệp chưa, bước vào đồng thời, vì rộng hồn ngồi, sẵn sàng bình tư, vì không bỏ đầy thầm, nơi nào nhớ bác đi, em sẽ này thân lợi mạnh.
Thank you, Mr. Chair. Thank you. Is it three o'clock? Yeah.